Hello everybody, this is Miranda the Hybrid and welcome to Art Talk Thursday. Now today we are doing one of the most requested videos. We are doing color theory and I'm just gonna jump right into it because oh my god, there is a lot to go through. I'm gonna try condensing everything down as efficiently as I can, but this will probably be like a 30 or 40 minute video. There's just so much to go over. So let's get started. The very first thing you need to learn about color theory is how color works. Now there are actually three different sets of primaries. Everybody keeps arguing back and forth about what the primaries are, when usually they're actually talking about one of the three different sets. So we're gonna go over every single set and what they mean and how they interact. Now the first set is RGB, and it's relevant because this is how light works. This is how your eyeballs work. What you see here on the left is the visible light spectrum. All the way down here, we have reds, and that's the slowest kind of wavelength. As you go upwards, you get into blues and purples, and those are the fastest ones. If you go above these, you get ultraviolet. And if you go below the red, you get infrared. Now, humans can only see what colors you see in this spectrum right here. Other creatures can see way, way more. There are some creatures that can see infrared light and ultraviolet light. So why does light spectrum actually matter? It matters is because this is how we interpret the world. What humans have done is we have split the primaries into three different types of light that we use for our technology. Red primary, green primary, and blue primary. If you look, here, I'm gonna make sure of it up on the screen. If you look really, really closely at your phone screen or anything with a monitor, you're gonna see tiny itty bitty little pixels. These are actually diodes. LED stands for light emitting diode. And each one of these has three different light types in it. A red diode, a blue diode, and a green diode. Because when you start mixing those together, they start creating different colors of light. Now, how does color itself work? Why do the materials around us have the colors that they do? Because I was starting to get ahead of myself. I'm extremely nerdy when it comes to color and light. So what happens if you have this blue ball here? Why is it blue? Well, what's happening are that the atoms in the ball are absorbing, because when you shine white light, imagine you're shining white light down onto this ball. White light is a combination of three these three primary colors of light. What's happening is the white light is shining down on the ball. The ball absorbs the red light and the green light, but the way the atoms are structured, it reflects the blue light. The same exact thing happens with the green of the plant. The white light is shining onto this leaf. The leaf absorbs the blue and absorbs the red wavelengths of light. But the way that the atoms are structured, the way the molecules are structured, it, it bounces back the green. Exact same thing happens with that rose over on top. It's absorbing the green and the blue, but it is not absorbing, it is reflecting the red. So that is the very, very, very base concept of how color and light works around you in regards to materials and molecules and atoms. Now, what about the color wheel of light itself? Let's take a look at that. Now, the light color wheel is called an additive color wheel. There are three of them, remember? Additive, subtractive, and designer. The additive color wheel is called additive because as you begin adding these colors together, eventually they will add up to white. A nice bright white light. And actually, fortunately in Procreate, I can demonstrate this because the illumination brushes react like light actually does. So let's make a color wheel out of the additive primaries. So here's our first primary, green light. Then we have red light, and then we have blue light. Let's see what happens when we add together red and blue. That sure looks a lot like magenta, which is one of the primaries of the subtractive color wheel. Now that's my own thing, I'm gonna get into that later. Now, let's take the blue and let's combine it with the green light. Ha, huh, doesn't that look a lot like primary cyan? Hmm. Now, let's take the red light 
and let's combine it with the green light. Holy crap! That's yellow. That is the third subtractive primary. And this is how light works. See how they're getting brighter and brighter? What happens if we add all of them together at once? Let's take our primary blue, put it over our primary red, and now our primary green. Wow! It's white light! I'm sorry, I'm getting so excited. I love talking about this kind of stuff. So that's how the additive primaries work. And the additive primaries are used in all of your screens or anything. The reason that there's a difference between additive and subtractive is based on what you're making. If you want to make a website, use RGB color because that means that it's going to be programmed and formatted in a way that will be optimized for digital display. So if you're doing digital art and you plan on making it digital stuff and not printing it, you use RGB color wheels. I'm just filling in the rest of this because this is so entertaining to me, like how they all work together. And for those of you who have Procreate, experiment with this. You can start mixing your light colors together to get different colors, just like this. That there is your light color wheel. Let's jump over to subtractives though, because that's what most people deal with. So what is the subtractive color wheel? Subtractive is usually what happens when you're printing. And this is why you see CMYK. CMYK stands for cyan, which is that bluish color, magenta, which is the pink, and yellow. And then K is either key slash black. That's why it's not CMYB, it's CMYK. Now you have to know your CMYK color wheel, your subtractive color wheel. Also, why is it called subtractive instead of additive? It's because as you add all of these colors together, they're going to go together, they're gonna to mix into black, or technically a really, really deep, muddy brown, gross gray color, but you get the point. As you keep adding these all together over and over again, they will make black, and that's a lower tone, so you're subtracting light away, e.g. subtractive. Additive, you're making white, subtractive, you're making black. Now, this is, the th this is the one thing that people have been arguing on the internet. They're like, oh my God, these are the true primaries, and they're the true primaries if you're mixing paint. If you go buy paint and you try mixing together primary blue with primary red, you're going to get a very muddy purple. If you want to make a nice bright purple, you mix together magenta and cyan. Now, this is where the confusion is happening from. Way, way, way long ago, we did not have access to pure primaries because these colors right here are considered pure primaries. What we had were natural colors, stuff like grinding up rocks, grinding up beetles, grinding up gemstones. And those were dilute, those, those colors were mixed of multiple different ones. They weren't directly primary, but for a very significant part of art history, people had red, yellow, and blue as the primaries because those were the purest colors they could get. Then back in like maybe the 1890s, we discovered chemical processes to make an even more pure form of those colors. So in, a, in essence, both people are right. Red, yellow, and blue are the primaries before the 1900s. CMYK are the primaries and the true actual scientific primaries of modernity. Now these are important because if you want to paint, if you want to use markers, if you want to mix colored pencils, this is what you want to know. You want to know your subtractive primaries. This is important for you traditional artists. So let's mix together some colors. Now I'm going to be using the closest thing I have to traditional materials, which is a wet sponge in here, because the wet sponge mixes very well. So what happens when we take the magenta and we take the cyan? That is an original primary blue right there, or very close to it. This is maybe more into the ultramarine range. Now let's take our cyan and our yellow a very nice bright green. Now let's take our yellow and let's put on some magenta. Holy crap, doesn't that red look a lot like primary red? Here's the truth for you. The primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, are designer primaries. And they are actually secondary colors if you look at them scientifically. Blue is a mixture of cyan and ultramarine that's been lightened a small amount. Red is a mixture of magenta and yellow. Your life is a lie. So technically, yes, blue and red are not primary colors. Not when you mix base pigments. And then to go get black, 
you bundle all of these guys up right in the center. See that? That looks like a virus of some sort. That's terrifying. This brush is really creepy. And this is also why it's called subtractive. Look, every time we added a color here, it got darker and darker. Both the parents are a lot brighter than their child. In fact, if you try mixing these together with just water without diluting it, look what happens here. It keeps adding. It doesn't make much of a change. You would have to literally add in some white and increase the color to make any difference. And yet again, I invite you to observe the fact that these are the subtractive primaries. Look at the color of their secondaries. And let's quickly jump into the additive primaries. So the primaries and the secondaries of the additive and subtractive color palettes are reversed. It's really, really interesting. So we've covered the fact that the primaries of light are the secondaries of pigment. And if you want to be painting and using markers, you need to use the subtractive primaries to make the colors you actually want to make. If you're starting from the base, of course, you can buy the colors straight up. But you know, if you want to be super fancy about it, you can mix your own colors. What about design though? What about this red, yellow, blue everybody's talking about? Red, yellow, and blue are the design primaries or the educational primaries as I like calling them because that's what's taught in school. Your design primaries, red, yellow, blue. So these are primaries. When you mix these together, and this will not work if you try using pigment. This is just conceptual mixing, remember that. If you conceptually mix them together, the in-betweens, purple, orange, and green. And then once you mix a primary with a secondary, you get a tertiary. These little buddies right over here. So remember, primary, secondary, tertiary. So what's important about these? Why, why is everybody making a big deal? Frankly, it's because the color wheel when it comes to design is what you want to look at for finding color palettes. Before we jump into color palettes though, I want you to look at this color wheel. The first color wheel was invented by Sir Isaac Newton in 1666. Along with this color wheel, there are three words we need to know about color, which are very important so you don't mix them up and use the wrong one, because I know I use the wrong words all the time. We're looking at shade, tint, and tone. First off, we have to start with hue though. What the heck is hue? Hue is a pure form of a color. What you're looking at right here inside the white circle, those are straight up pure hues. Shade happens when you start adding tint. So different shades of red are different reds that are being mixed with black. So technically all of these down until the black is completely covering everything are different shades of your hues. The next one you need to talk about is tints. Tint is the opposite of shade. Tint is when you start adding white. So technically pastels are a tint of hues. And then finally we have tones. Tone is when you add gray to pure hues. Ever heard when somebody says tone it down? It may be because they're asking you to stop being so vibrant. Wow, it's almost like science and color theory affect everyday life. So let's jump to color palettes. There are a bunch of different ones I want to go over. And fortunately, Procreate has been very nice and they build them in. Let's take a look at our color wheel. Now, if you have Procreate and the more updated versions, you can actually do this too. It's a nice little cheat. Let's go to Harmony. The very first one you've always heard of is complementary. Now, what is complementary? Complementary is when two colors are exactly opposite on the color wheel. They look good next to each other. Complementary, it's complementing it because it's sitting right across from it. Then you have analogous. Analogous is when you have three or four colors just sitting right next to each other on the color wheel. Like right over here is one of my favorites. We have a deep blue, a purple, and kind of edging towards a cyan turquoise. The next one is triadic. Triadic is when you make an equilateral triangle and then you just shift it around to get three colors that look good together. If you think about the Burger King logo, the Burger King logo is a triadic color palette. Finally, you start getting into interesting ones like tetradic, which means four that are equally spaced apart. And then one of my favorites, a split complement complementary. It's when you take, it's kind of like crossing a triadic with a complementary. You see, you have your main color and then two that are kind of split a little bit far apart near the end. So now you know the very basics about colors at least, what about what they mean? And why does it matter what they mean? 
Let's go over some more stuff. This is literally non-ending. We could be talking about this all day long. The other part of color theory is the meaning of colors. Now, the meaning of colors changes from culture to culture and from year to year. For instance, in ye olden times, blue was actually a feminine color and pink and red were masculine colors. These days, it got switched around when capitalism took over. If we split this half and half, you're going to have your cool tones and your warm tones. Cool tones usually, you know, calmness, serenity, peace. And then warm tones, energy, vitality, happiness. And that's just the base though. We could talk about every single color individually. For instance, blue. Blue shows dependability. It shows professionality. It shows calmness and serenity of mind. Yellow shows happiness, energy, competence. Red shows passion, sometimes danger and anger, love. Green can be used for both life, health, prosperity, money, but also jealousy, greed. Purple can be used for magic, romance, and royalty. It's actually interesting between these colors over here on the color wheel, because way back when, getting these colors as pigments was extremely hard. You had to crush up gemstones. And so that's why you see a lot of things that were blue in ye olden times being expensive or associated with the royalty, just because it was expensive and hard to get. That's why royal blue, royal purple, majestic purple, it all has to do with supply and demand before we actually developed colors that were available to the wide open public. Orange is another energetic color, maybe has to do with food, movement, positivity, sports. Then you can start wheedling in with these uh, triads, uh, with the uh, triadics colors. Like for instance, I personally think that turquoise is one of the new biggest colors. I'm even using it in my background right now. It has to do with technology, magic, mystery. It's a very new color that's really been taking over for the last 10 years. Oh, important ones too. Brown is usually seen as masculine for whatever reason. Black is seen as threatening, powerful, mysterious. And white is seen as pure, clean, sometimes emotionally distant, innocent. And then gray is considered industrial, professional, maybe emotionally distant. And of course, military, you could drop the military in there too. You can honestly research the meanings of different colors and it's extremely important for branding. I'm gonna link my branding video at the very end of this and there's more color theory that I talk about in the branding video, video that's actually pretty important. But yeah, that's, these are just the basics I'm talking about. Basic color theory. I'm going to show you guys a little bit about how to use color theory though before we end and also about one of my favorite thing. Let's go over vibrating boundaries. This is something that's actually kind of painful. Vibrating boundaries is a visual phenomena when you mix two colors together that don't want to go together. Let me show you what I mean. Let's take the, let's take an intense purple or something. These boundaries are vibrating slightly. You can kind of see how the edges are almost brrrring. Let's find a, let's find one that's even more painful. There, that one's starting to get bad. Look at that. Look at how they're all just kind of going ah with each other. It's almost as if there's an outline. See how there's almost a visual outline? Oh my God, this is a really bad vibrating boundary. This hurts my eyes. Okay, but see how there's a almost a visual outline happening between these two colors? Now, I don't know what you can use this for. It's literally just a visual phenomenon, but it's always been one of my favorites because our professor, instead of teaching us something useful, he actually just had us sit down and play with these pieces of paper until we could find some vibrating boundaries. Now, how are you going to actually apply whatever I just taught you into your art? Let me give you some examples. This picture that I drew right over here. Most of everything is brown, right? And then suddenly, red. I'm using these two complementaries or near complementaries to really make this Ubukon dragon pop. That's actually a way to drive a focal point. The focal point of this picture is the dragon. It's this bright, highly textured creature on a very dark background. And not only that, it's warm. If you put a warm color over 
a cool color, the warm color draws towards you in perspective and the cool color pulls backwards. That's exactly why I put the bright red orange vermilion abuk on on top of a kind of more cool green background. It's really sitting there. Let's look at another one quickly. What about Yadalon over here? Here we can see a split complementary. You get the blues and purples from the galaxy against the bright orange tones that are making up his chest and face. And because of that warm tone on top of the blue tone, that part of him really pulls forward. This one here is interesting because it's opposite way around. You have a warm toned background, though it's really dark, and a cool toned main character. Now, if you look here, what are the three main colors? Blue, brown, and red. If you took away the blackness from the brown, you'd get yellow. This is actually a play on the designer primaries, which is why it works so well. It doesn't seem too cluttered. And even though the blue tones, the cool tones, are on the background, which is warm tones, there's high contrast versus the background, which is why the character stands out and draws your attention and the background disappears into the distance. So you can disobey these rules of color if you know what you're doing. And I will be making a video about how to drive a focal point, and I'm going to be using this image as an example because it's a really good example. This was a piece for a client. Same, same idea here. You got the warm face on the purple background, and the main color palette in here is purple, blue, and orange, which is a very strong color palette. It's another split complementary. So I hope that helped everybody. Again, color theory is very complicated, very wide reaching, and I know this is a long video because there's just so much to talk about, but I was able to give you the basics. I'm going to leave some links down below for color palette machines you can work with, you can play with, uh, other links, other articles that are very good at explaining this if you want to know more, if you want to know more history, more theory, just how to use it. And I will link the branding video to the end of this one. If you're new here and you're not one of my subscribers and this helped you, go ahead and subscribe because this is not the end of the video. So there's going to be a lot more art stuff. And thank you to my patrons and anybody who ever drops me five bucks on Venmo because there have been a few of you now. Thank you. Gives me coffee so I can edit more videos. As per usual, my art gremlins. Drink your water. Get your sleep. Believe in yourself. Value yourself. And follow your dreams. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.